the University of North Dakota, this is Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Hello and welcome to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy. In the show business, they would say the Ralph was dark. No games for the Sioux. It was an off weekend for North Dakota. A chance for some to heal and for everyone to catch their breath for the stretch drive. We've got a full lineup for you. Small in stature, but extremely gifted. That would be one way to describe Evan Trupp. His list of achievements and honors will attest to the latter. We'll visit with the Sioux senior from Anchorage during our player profile. And there's a secret room in the bowels of Ralph Engelstead Arena that no one, I mean no one, not even Coach Hackstall can get into without a key. The vault is the subject of our feature story. Don't miss it. Coming up, Coach Hackstall will talk about players who are very important, play important roles on this team, even though you seldom see them on Friday or Saturday night. But before we talk to the coach, we have a question for you. Which team did UND play in the 2007 U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame game? The answer and more when we come back. You're watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Voller Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. Tickets are still available for many of the exciting University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux home hockey games at the REL. Support your team and get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! They're coming. Seems like from every wireless carrier. You may have heard them already. The doubt casting, the empty comparisons. While they shout them at the top of their lungs to try to blur the lines. In the end, just ask yourself, does the network work? This is America's largest and most reliable network. Verizon, built so you can rule the air. So overall, this is going to have a $300 million impact. North Dakota Spirit, the campaign for the University of North Dakota. Join us. It's a place to do a pop shop, put your shopping into overdrive. A great place to wine and dine, make a taste for a jump and dive. Yeah, it's great, a great for a great destination. Great, a great for they don't call a grant for nothing. Before the break, we asked you, who did the Sioux play in the 2007 Hockey Hall of Fame game? The answer is Michigan State. The Sioux pummeled the defending national champion six to nothing behind Phil Lamoureux's goaltending. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey with head coach Dave Hackstall, I'm Tim Hennessy. Coach, 27 guys on the roster for your team uh, this season uh, with the addition at Christmas. And, well, let's do the math. 20 can dress for a game. That means not all, all 27 can play or be on the bench during games Friday and Saturday night. But those other seven are just as important as the other 20, aren't they? Those guys play such a key role on our team. Uh, obviously, most of those guys get in the lineup uh, from time to time or even you know, on a more regular basis. But uh, even the guys that don't are critical parts of our team. They're very, very well respected. They're character guys in the locker room. They're leaders in terms of work ethic. You know, Guys like Ryan Hill, guys like Tate Maris, great students, great people. Uh, great teammates. Of course, they have to. They have to have a certain mentality, don't they, to uh, to accept that they're probably not going to play because they know, not well, going to play a lot. You know, it's a it's a real fine line because those guys expect to play. They show up and practice uh, with an expectation that they're going to be in the lineup each weekend, and that that takes some of the uh, greatest mental toughness, I think, of any athlete uh, to you know come to the reality each week that no, I'm not in the lineup tonight, Friday night, Saturday night, uh, but show up on Monday, the next Monday, and be ready to compete at our, you know, an extremely high level uh, as if you, know, you are gonna be in the lineup the following Friday. You mentioned a couple of guys, one of those would be Ryan Hill, a defenseman from Duluth. Let's learn a little bit more about Ryan Hill. Okay. 
with North Dakota sophomore defenseman Ryan Hill. Ryan, we want to get baseline on you, and that, of course, is uh, Duluth, Minnesota, Hermantown, Minnesota, actually, yep. I guess, which is up on the hill, right? Yep, it's right above, kind of way up past the hill, kind of past Duluth, so. Ryan, what your parents do? Uh, my mom is a paralegal. She works in a law firm, and uh, my dad actually owns his own bowling alley. Really? Yeah, bowling alley and bar. There's like a kind of like a sports bar attached to it, so it's pretty cool. You had a great experience at Hermantown, but before that, did you start skating like everybody else around here when you were five years old? Oh, yeah, I started real young. Uh, I think I started playing officially when I was four. I uh, played for Piedmont, which is in Duluth, and then we moved to actually the east part of Duluth, where uh, Forbert's from, and we, I stayed there and played my squirt hockey and my hockey there and moved to Hermantown when I was in fifth grade. So. And you guys did well at Hermantown? Yeah, really well. We took third place my senior year in the state, so that was a lot of fun. And then after that, the USHL? Yep. I got drafted by Green Bay, so I went there and uh, made the team. And a couple weeks into the season, I got traded to Ohio, and that's where I spent my first year, first year juniors in Ohio. So, you, uh, Somebody tells me you're a pretty good baseball player. Uh, baseball, yeah. I was pretty decent in baseball. I played baseball and football, both in high school as well as hockey, obviously. And uh, I don't know, it was, it was a lot of fun playing three sports in, in high school. I wouldn't have traded it for anything. From Duluth, any pressure to go to Minnesota Duluth? Pretty good program there. Uh, yeah, it was a good program. I was kind of a Bulldog fan growing up because they're, you know, the home team or, or whatnot. But, uh, you know, North Dakota came knocking, so that's, that's where I went. Ryan, so far, any regrets you haven't played? And you could have gone somewhere else, I'm guessing, and, and where you would have been able to play. Any regrets about that? Um, no, I don't have any regrets yet. Uh, you know, I'm still still waiting to play, and, and hopefully that comes when my time comes. You know, I can step in and, and do well. But you know, no, I, I love being here and love all the guys, the teammates, the coaches. So everything's all good. And education is important. Education is important. Yeah, get that four-year degree, and that's also just as important. All right, Ryan. Thanks for this. Appreciate it. Good yeah, luck. Thanks a lot, Tim. Ryan Hill, North Dakota sophomore defenseman. Ryan got a chance to play a bit this year already against the USA 18 team earlier in December. Coming up, it's a log jam in the WCHA heading into the stretch drive. We'll check out the standings. And if your kid needs a new hockey stick, get ready to take out a loan, rob a convenience store or something like that. It's a whole different story than when we bought a wooden Christian Brothers for about 12 bucks. An inside look at the Sioux Hockey Stick Room, the vault. Coming up next. The play is under review. Hey, take a look at this. This online course is awesome. Yeah, I gotta see that again. I've been snowboarding for 16, 17 years. I just enjoy going out, getting a trick and just getting it dialed so you can just stomp it every time. You'll have days where everything's just clicking and you're able to just land everything you try. I don't even like stopping to eat. When you're riding and everything's going well, you feel invincible. Just seeing me out on the hill and riding and just having a good time, they're gonna come in here and know that I know what I'm talking about. It makes a big difference with the customers. I'm Wade Fisher from Shields. information about summer hockey camps, go to FightingSue.com or call 701-777-6595. The insurance puzzle. Each piece is specific to you and your business. Each part fits in its own way with only one combination that works best. Every organization has its own individual insurance puzzle. The key is to find your very own solution. Voller Insurance can help. We've been tailoring insurance solutions since 1947, providing VIP service one business at a time. Let us help solve your insurance puzzle. Voller Insurance, Grand Forks, Fargo, Bismarck, Minneapolis, Sioux Falls.
We had a chance to step inside a special room at Ralph Engelstead Arena. That room is always under lock and key to protect some of the team's most important tools. I'm here in the UND Hockey Equipment Room with Pat Swanson. Pat, what do you do here? I'm the Director of Hockey Operations for the men's hockey team here. We're going to go into a special room right now. It has a nickname. Uh, the Vault. The Vault. Okay, the vault. let's go there right now. All right, so here we are. We're in the vault. The vault. And not stacks of money, but stacks of sticks. Yes. Right? And now these, of course, are all for the players. What are we yep. looking at in terms of value for sticks here? They're about, uh, in the store, they'd be 250 to 300 but for us, they're about 140 bucks. So you get a little bit of a deal. Yeah, quite okay. a bit of a discount. And uh, they're about $70,000 in here right now. $70,000. Yeah. So no wonder it's under lock, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So when you, when you look at per stick, if I was a consumer it'd be more like 300 for me to buy a stick like this yeah and then uh, in the store and then one thing though 90% of these guys are custom sticks okay. and you, as a if you're playing high school you really can't even get it but if you could it would cost you about two grand for a mold where they waive that because we buy so many sticks so I'm looking at a stick right now this is Derek Lapointe stick and the stick is supposed to come underneath your chin right right and it's taller than me right now yeah. so, uh, does a stick like this cost more? Uh, does he have a custom stick? His is custom too. And the price, no, all customs are the same price. No. Talk about the technology of the sticks. Uh, the biggest thing is your stiffness, and that means the kick point, where the blade, kind of like a golf club, where the flex point is, and that's right about here. But the flex goes all the way through here, and then it's, uh, they start like 85, stiffness is a common one, and it goes up to 100, 110, which is the stiffest. And like, if you go on YouTube and stuff, you can see guys where they slow it down, it looks like a bow and arrow. Sure. It actually makes a huge curve. Yeah. Okay, I gotta ask this question. When guys break sticks, do you yeah. cringe a little bit? Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> especially when it happens a lot. How but. many sticks do you go through? Yeah, uh, it's, some guys average is about 30 sticks, and then I think we have three or four guys that go through about 40 to 60. It'll be this year. 40 to 60 sticks yep. in a season. In a season, yeah. Who's the worst? Uh, probably Ben Blood, just because of his size and his strength. Oh, that's, the, that's what you're saying? Is yep. the reason he breaks not over people's heads or anything? <laughs> no, no, <Okay>. that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, Pat, thanks so much yeah. for talking to us today. And these sticks, you said if a consumer was to buy one, is about 300 bucks or in so? In the store, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. See you later. Wood sticks were used exclusively for many years. Stick makers experimented with more expensive materials such as aluminum, Kevlar, and fiberglass. Even though they are much more expensive, sticks made of composite materials are the norm on most rinks today. Just five points separate the top five teams in the WCHA. We'll take a look at the standings. And for a few hours each weekend, you see the players showing off their hockey skills. But that's just a small part of what being a Sioux hockey player is all about. We'll talk about what these guys do out in the community when Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey continues. This is a place where innovation abounds, a place where dreams come true, a place where creativity is a way of life, a place that fires our soul. Join us for the North Dakota Spirit Campaign. Together, we will shape the future of UND and North Dakota. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where they learn from leading experts, share in discoveries and create knowledge. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Dream. 
dreams are forged. Character is tested. Teams are united. Champions win here. Watch the crowning of a new NCAA Men's Frozen Four champion April 7th and 9th on ESPN and ESPN2 in high definition. For information, visit NCAA.com slash Frozen Four. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy with head coach Dave Haxtell. Got a look at the WCHA standings coach and five points separating the top five teams. I guess we kind of figured it'd be this way, didn't we? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's just as tight as we expected it to be going into the final eight games. Everybody's even up in a uh, number of games played within that group of five, uh, and that's what we expected. I bet you love hearing that your last four series are against four of the bottom five teams in the league. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard it a little bit over the last uh, few days, but uh, uh, it doesn't mean a whole lot to me in, you know, in terms of uh, uh, where you know, teams are sitting at in, uh, in the standings. You know, we have uh, UAA coming in this weekend. They're fighting for home ice. Uh, they've won uh, three of their last four games and are playing very well. So we, we know more. Uh, you know, we know better than that than, uh, than to start looking at standings when you uh, look at your upcoming schedule. We'll talk about them a little bit more later on, but you had the off weekend and, and a chance for your guys to get out and do a few things, and it's not like an off, it takes an off weekend to do that. Your guys do a lot of things away from the rink that I don't know if a lot of people are aware of. Uh, certainly children of the community are aware of it because that's where they spend a lot of their time, don't they? Well, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the guys and, and the job that they do in the community. Uh, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that, uh, uh, you know, they're not, they're not headline news by any uh, shape of the uh, stretch of the imagination, but I think they have a big impact on the kids and, uh, you know, and, and uh, on our community in general, and I think our guys do a great job with that. Uh, putting in the extra time. I mean, it's you know, it's over a season. It's uh, you know, probably four to five hundred hours uh, that either as a team or individually guys are putting in, uh, and that's uh, that's something that's very very important to our team in connecting and helping uh, you know be part of the community. When I look at it and I see it, I, I never see any sour faces either because oftentimes I'll hear somebody go, I'm going here tonight, who wants to come with? And it's usually three or four guys go, yeah, I'll come, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. I mean, they seem to want to do it uh, certainly willingly. Huh? Well, it's absolutely. You don't have to I, beat them into no, it. No, not at all. I mean, I think our guys really enjoy it, and and that's part of the personal connection within the community. And that's it's uh, you know it's a uh, you know it's a responsibility that comes with being part of the program. But I think much like learning and understanding what being part of the Fighting Sioux is all about, I think you grow into that as you become uh, part of the program here. And I think the longer you you're here, the more you understand how important that connection with the community and the and especially the youth in the community is for uh, for our hockey team. It all weaves together too, don't you think? When when kid, young kids see it, you're just establishing a new fan base there as well. Well, that's absolutely. I mean, you're establishing a, a new fan base. Um, you know, but I, I guess I, I look at it on a more uh, incremental, small basis. You know, I, I think there's a, a good impact there for both uh, you know, the, the young boy or the young girl, but also a great impact and a learning experience for our players in growing up. That's one of those things where I think uh, when, when people are down on a hockey player for something he did on the ice, I say, wait a minute, these are young guys and they do a lot of good things around the community as well. Just kind of a little slack. Well, there's, you know what, they're, you know, our guys are growing up and they're learning as they're here uh, like anybody else. Uh, and being part of the community and understanding that connection with the community is a big part of growing up and learning, uh, you know, the responsibility that comes with uh, being in the position that our players are in, in our community. Thanks, Coach. We'll be talking about Alaska Anchorage here in a bit. Well, this guy has a great resume. Rookie of the Year in Junior Hockey, Rookie of the Year at UND, Final Purple Award winner, and his overtime game-winning goal at Minnesota two years ago was College Hockey Goal of the Year. A visit with senior Evan Trupp is coming up. We'll get to that, but first a look back at our Fighting Sioux history. He played on the last USHL championship team the Thunder Bay Flyers ever had before coming to UND. But where is Darcy Matani now? We'll have that answer and more when we come back.
For information about summer hockey camps, go to FightingSue.com or call 701-777-6595. The 2011 Red Baron WCHA Final Five returns to the XL Energy Center March 17th through the 19th with two new teams in the WCHA Conference. The tournament is now 16 strong. Plus, you can catch a Minnesota Wild game on Saturday afternoon when the Wild take on Columbus, followed by WCHA Fan Fest and the championship game of the tournament Saturday night. Visit XLEnergyCenter.com or stop on by the XL Energy Center box office. As summer is left behind, fall brings new adventures. Make them better with a vehicle from Dahlstrom Motors. Whatever adventures come your way, Dahlstrom can make the difference in making your life a smooth ride. You gotta be prepared out there. The conditions can be very demanding. It's not easy heading out in the winter. You're facing altitude, wind, snow, and changes in temperature. All your layers and accessories have to work together. You need gear that's up to the challenge. But you need styles that are up to date. Experience of training can make all the difference. My training is really helpful to the customers. I'm Zach Angus. And I'm Melissa Langseth. And we're experts in cold weather gear at Shields. The answer to our where are they now question, well, to the best of our knowledge, Darcy Matani is still playing pro hockey and in his first season in a Korean league. Evan Trump could have a highlight reel of his own with the thrills he's provided in his three plus years at UND. Let's see how it all started for the guy affectionately known as Trumper. We're with North Dakota senior center iceman Evan Trump, sometimes left winger, sometimes right winger Evan, uh, anywhere they put you, you you're comfortable, right? Oh, yeah. Let's start from the beginning, Alaska Anchorage, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, hometown. Uh, yeah, um, I was uh, originally born in, in uh, Fairbanks, uh, where, my, where my dad played hockey, but uh, I did some moving around a little bit when I was younger and uh, just uh, grew up in uh, Anchorage, Alaska uh, when I was, since I've been uh, four years old. And uh, yeah, oldest of five, uh, three younger brothers and a younger sister. So your hockey career started in Anchorage then, not Fairbanks? Yes, it started, hockey. started in Anchorage, yeah. Uh, when I uh, moved to uh, Wisconsin for a year where my dad coached, and, uh, and then uh, to Penticton for two years that I don't really remember, so I was pretty young, but uh, moved to Anchorage when I was four, and that's where the hockey career started again. Yeah. Evan, what was it like leaving home so early, so young, to uh, pursue hockey? Uh, after my uh, junior year, I went to uh, Penticton, it was uh, it was uh, kind of easy because uh, I'm familiar with Penticton. I actually lived with uh, my uncle in Penticton when I played for Penticton, and uh, so it kind of made it easy to move away from home because I, I was living with family. But um, my parents were able to visit me quite a bit. My mom works for the airline, so she flies a lot. Did you have an opportunity to play other sports? Yeah, I, I uh, was pretty active as a kid. I played uh, played a lot of soccer. Uh, just kind of intramural sports during, uh, during school hours and stuff like that, like volleyball and basketball, but uh, probably soccer and hockey were my, my main sports that I played. How did you get to North Dakota then? Um, you know, I was just uh, playing in Penticton and uh, came on a fly down here and uh, two other colleges. And um, I previously knew some of the guys that were already here, like uh, I went overseas with Taylor Chorney and and Brian Lee, and they had uh, a lot of good things to say about the organization and the coaching staff and, and the team and stuff. And obviously, I uh, was blown away with the facility here and uh, couldn't say no. College hockey or pro hockey, I mean, or the business world, or what's after? Uh, just gonna, gonna keep playing hockey and for, the long, for as, uh, as long as I can. <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard to get away from this game that you love so much, so um, probably do something in, uh, in the hockey world. Well, best of luck to whatever you do. Thanks for doing this with us. Yeah, thanks a lot. Let's not forget Trump's performance in the WCHA Final Five last year when he was named the MVP. Trump seems to be at his best when he's playing against the best. 
Well, he's, uh, it is back for the entire team and the WCHA back to the grind for the Final Four Series, starting with Alaska Anchorage this weekend. Coach Hackstall will talk about the Seawolves when we come back. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Valor Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. That is a great online course. Tickets are still available for many of the exciting University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux home hockey games at the REL. Support your team and get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! Studio One is a television show produced by staff and students at the University of North Dakota. Here you actually get to do your own stories and you get to go out and talk to people and interview and learn about the cameras and everything that goes into like a live television production. I mean, it's incredible. Give it a try. I mean, even if you're not broadcasting communications major, anything, I mean, it's worth it. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy with head coach Dave Hackstall. Coach, it's time now to take a look at the, the remainder. you got four more series left and, uh, you know, one game at a time, I know. But Alaska Anchorage in town this weekend. You maybe owe them a little bit. You had a 5-1 lead on them when you played them earlier, and all of a sudden, boom, it's 5-5. That's a pretty good yeah, hockey we, team. Uh, they are. They're a good team. They're, you know, they, they started the year out as a, as a younger team. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we got out on a good, I guess, a good start. Uh, up there in our first game of the year, but uh, they quickly came back on us and uh, you know erased a five nothing deficit. So they've been playing well. Uh, they've uh, they've won three out of their last four. They're uh, right there battling for one of the top six spots. Uh, they're you know in, in typical mold of uh, the Dave Shyack team. They're real hard to play against. They uh, they grind it low. Uh, they play very uh, good strong team defense, and uh, they've been successful that way. Coach, it would seem to me that it would be uh, very important that you finally did against uh, Saturday night against CC. Get a, get a lead on these guys and make them have to play your way. Yeah, I think that's even more important uh, against uh, this particular team that we're playing. They play very well with a lead. Uh, they, you know, play very, uh, you know, very well in those uh, tight, close, low-scoring games. And uh, we've got to go out. We've got to play good five-on-five -five hockey, and our specialty teams has to make a difference for us, bottom line. See Wolves in this weekend. We want to thank you now for watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey at St. Cloud State, a preview there next week, and a story on hockey players' nicknames as well. That and much more on our next show. If you have a question or a comment for me or about the show, send us an email at hockeyshow at und.edu. On behalf of Coach Hackstall and the Sioux Hockey team, we thank all of our fans for watching, and we'll see you next week on Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. <laughs>